Hello everybody and welcome back to Band of Battles. Um, well today I'm going to do something a little differently and uh, namely that is artillery replay or SPG replays because um, I noticed uh, on the channel of the Mighty Jingles or Jingles um, that a lot of people would like to see some more SPG gameplay from the SPG perspective so that they can learn how it works and get a more well, a more refined understanding about the class. And one thing I also wanted to do was point out a few things that um, Jingles obviously got wrong or, well, didn't realize happened. So, one of those things is Jingles says that counter battery fire is almost non-existent at this point in World of Tanks and that the last time he played World of Tanks he would play counter battery uh, almost constantly. Now I must say it still happens. It's a little bit more difficult but it still happens. And the first rule of SPG gameplay is move after every shot. And that way counter battery fire gets less effective because you won't be hit that often and that will be demonstrated in this replay very very well that's my first shot in nice amount of damage i must say and there it happened see that is why you move after every shot and there you have it I was one shot, I was counter battery fired by the enemy M53, M55. And that's completely on me. I should have relocated in that instance. I should have. But I didn't. And that happens. And that is a reminder for me to keep moving. Now, sometimes I start out moving after every shot in the game. And once I notice that all my other SPG buddies aren't getting focused, I stop doing that. It's not really smart because somebody in the enemy SPGs could think, oh well, I'm gonna shoot now seven minutes into the game uh, towards enemy camping locations, but eh, I take the risk from time to time. Then there was another thing that I wanted to talk about, and that was that Jingle said that tracer rounds aren't around anymore well not tracer rounds tracer streams behind the shell that they don't exist anymore that's not completely true they do but they are really thin and really um well hard to see so it, it's kind of difficult in some maps or in some situations to spot them but they are still around they are and they can be really useful if you want to counter battery fire your enemies so those are two things uh, Jingles is not completely wrong about them but it is not completely right about them either so yeah and don't don't get me wrong by the way don't get me wrong i absolutely love jingles his content i am like a drug addict that um, can't go without his fix if jingles doesn't upload and now there's something i noticed on the map the m41 is moving forward i know he's gonna spot something even if he's dying because of it and there is the scorpion g and what you're going to see is one of those things that, that people really hate SPGs about. A one-shot. I just one-shot at that SPG. And I actually feel a little bad about it because it doesn't happen that often. But to that, S uh, to that Scorpion, it's going to seem like he was just... Well, no matter what he did, he couldn't get out of that situation. So yeah, what I was saying about Jingles, I, I don't, I like his content, I don't mind him saying it, but I just wanted to say it. It was a little mistake on his part, so 
not going to hold it against him. Don't think I'm bashing him for it. I noticed in his comments that a couple of people wanted to see more SPG-related gameplay from the perspective of the SPG uh, because they wanted to learn from it, to learn to better themselves or to learn how to effectively um, get out of positions that SPGs can hit or how to avoid being hit by them. And about being not being hit by SPGs, I think it will always happen, but you can actually minimize the risk to yourself if you know how SPGs play and what their favorite locations are. So there's that. Um, I really want to make videos about how I play SPGs, how I think they should be played, how they can be played really well or something like that. So I'm gonna try that for you guys. If you, if you like that sort of stuff, I will try it for you. So one of the things that I think about when I'm playing in my SPGs is um, how can I maximize my usefulness to my team? Uh, one of those things is um, the stun mechanic. And because of the stun mechanic, I think that SPGs are more useful at the moment than they were before. Because if I stun somebody and my team gets to shoot them, one of my teammates gets to reload faster or hit a weak point, a weak point better than the enemy can hit him, th that's going to be extremely useful. I can degrade an enemy tank for a little while um, so that my team has an advantage over them. So what I mainly do in my SPGs, I don't focus on one enemy. And a lot of people think that SPGs or, or SPG players more accurately focus on one guy in particular. And some people do. I, I absolutely agree. Some people do that. Um, but I don't. I spread my shots around on different targets where I think that my team will be most hard pressed for my support or where I think that my team will be able to do some assistance damage to them. And in chat I make a little bit of a dick comment and I realize that but I was like guys come on you're two super heavy tanks move forward with your derp guns and hit that T95. Give me that assistance damage. One of the other things I do normally, um, it's not really showcased in this game at the moment, but what I normally do is I relocate after every shot and sometimes I even move along a flank. If I see that my teammates are winning a flank, I'm going to move with them. I'm going to stay behind them, but I'm going to move with them to get into a better position. Um, so I'm constantly in positions that the enemy will not suspect me to be. And that is gonna make your life a lot easier in your games. And those are about the most essentials of playing SPGs well. Uh, there's a lot more to it, um, and I'm gonna go into detail into that a little later, but... Um, relocation after every shot is the first thing you should learn when you're playing SPGs. You've got more than enough time to do it in between shots, even on the lower tier SPGs. Uh, in between shots, look at your map, look at the situation on the flank. Should you relocate to a different location on the map entirely, or can you stay in the position where you are? Where are you most effective? Uh, where does your team need your help? Uh, stuff like that is all pretty basic but important. Um, and as I said, what I do, I don't focus on one enemy in particular. I spread my shots around and hope that that will um, cause most damage and have the most influence on how my team is doing. Apart from that... Um, Sometimes switching to your premium ammo because it has a larger splash radius might be a good one, but it's not necessary. 
fully aiming your uh, shots, while well, most of the times you won't always have time for it. Counter battery fire is extremely useful if you can pull it off. If it's a map where you know, okay, enemy SPGs are most likely going to sit in that position, yeah, sure, go for it. But don't depend on it. I think that relocating between each of your shots is a more important skill to have than to be able to figure out where enemy SPGs are going to be. Because I think this way, if an enemy SPG is constantly trying to blind fire me, is trying to counter battery me, while I'm relocating between every shot so it is more difficult for him, he's not focus focusing his fire on my team. So I'm actually more useful to my team by not counter battery firing that enemy SPG. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't know. It, it, SPGs aren't really that difficult to play, but there are some little things that you should just get the hang of if you want to play them well. And that is knowing where to fire, where to move to, relocating between shots, and knowing which enemy is the most important target for your team, I guess. And here we just have the post-battle results screen um, from that match. I did 1838 assistance damage and 2652 regular damage. I did one shot that Scorpion G and again I do feel sorry for the dude. Um, it, it doesn't happen that often, trust me. I've had instances where I've hit really lightly armored tanks and did 200 300 damage and instances where i missed super heavy tanks and did four or five hundred damage so there's it's a big difference um it's all about luck and that scorpion g player was just unlucky i reckon on to some other important factors about SPGs and how to make them even better in what they do and let's first start off with Equipment I've got a large caliber Artillery shell rammer installed which makes this reload a lot faster um, It decreases my reload time by 3.94 which is nearly four seconds um, I've got an enhanced gun laying drive and if I could, if I could have mounted the, what's it called, I've got it on here at least, the vertical stabilizer, if I could have mounted the vertical stabilizer, I would have mounted that instead of the improved ventilation, I think, uh, and improved ventilation as well. So, because this class is all about firing as quickly as possible to do as much stun damage or damage as possible i think that those three things are the most important pieces of equipment you can put on it because it will decrease your aim time it will decrease your um your reload speed it will increase your accuracy with the improved ventilation it's all just really important to have and the same thing with the case of cola it will decrease your reload time, it will decrease your aim time, it will increase your accuracy, it will increase your concealment, it will increase your view range and your signal range as well. So I think that those are all important things to have on an SPG. Would I switch out a small or a repair kit or first aid kit for the large, nah. Would I get a fire extinguisher or, or automatic fire extinguisher? Nah. The fire extinguisher, most of the time, if you get hit by something that sets you on fire, you're either so low hit points that you can just let it burn out, or it reloads fast enough so that even if you put it out, it won't matter anyway. So. And I must admit, I haven't been set on fire in my M53 yet. Now on to skills. For my 
entire crew, I have Brothers in Arms, which is, I think, again, the most important skill to have on an SPG. Because it, as I said, increases all of those stats that are important to you as an SPG player. Now, as a second skill or perk, I got six cents on my commander. I've got designated target, which is actually pretty useful to have because um, even in indirect fire mode, it will make an enemy you target visible for two more seconds. That is why I could see that Scorpion G for so much longer. If I didn't have designated target on my gunner, the, the Scorpion G could have pulled back, stealthed back up and moved back into his position again. Now, because I was able to see him for two seconds longer, I knew he was going back up the hill. So I took the shot. And other than that, that eye, not useful. It's only effective with AP, APCR and heat. So not on hash or high explosive. Snapshot on the M5355, actually really useful because you've got a turret. And you've got a turret with a long reach. So, I think that if I have, um, oh no, see, I already have it on my other gunner, and it's only useful on one. So, snapshot and that eye, both gone. Um, designated target, exactly the same. Um, it's not useful to have on only one gunner armor not as useful i would train up armor if i have my um, concealment on 100 percent because i don't think that you would need repairs or firefighting as quickly as armor because you don't get targeted that often if you do get targeted you're mostly dead anyways and you don't get set on fire that much. So, armorer on one of my gunners, yeah. And the other repairs, most likely, because that is actually the more useful of these two um, skills. So, my other gunner, as I said, snapshot, because it increases your accuracy during turret rotation and because you have a pretty wide reach with the american spgs that is pretty useful to have now my driver i as a second skill have concealment and then smooth ride because it's training up smooth ride you don't really need smooth ride uh, improves accuracy accuracy when firing on a move you don't fire that much on the move anyways uh, preventive maintenance Increases chance you'd be set on fire? Not really necessary, again, like firefighting on fire extinguisher. Clutch braking could be useful. Off-road driving could be useful. And controlled impact, eh, only useful if you are also moving. So, um, if you move, somebody rams you, you're gonna take less damage. Um, and he's going to take more damage. Useful against really light light tanks or light tanks which are really low on hit points. Um, that you might survive the ramming attack and they die. But you have to see it coming. You have to be moving as well. So, yeah. Preventative maintenance and controlled impact are the least useful of the two. And off-road driving and clutch braking are still pretty useful. Um my loaders I went for an adrenaline rush on one tank so that if you get splashed by enemy SPGs you get set up on like 40 hit points you only have 40 hit points left you're gonna reload 10% of you're gonna reload a little faster and I had a point where I could test that out and I think I went from a 33 to a 30 second reload if I'm correct and my other loader has repairs which oh well concealment and then repairs and the other 
and all the other crew members have concealment training up at the moment. That is because, well yeah, concealment is always useful, it's always useful to be seen as the late as possible and repairs because the Lotus don't actually have that much more interesting to take. Your Amorak doesn't get damaged all that often, so it's not really useful to have. Um, adrenaline Rush, only useful on one loader because your loader doesn't get taken out that often. And Intuition, when you only have two shell types, I don't think it's really useful. And if it is useful, I don't really see the point in it. Especially not with American SPGs. Um, so there's that for my uh, crew. Now, the only thing I haven't looked at is other skills for the commander. And that is most probably most useful character or useful um, position on the tank. Because... Well, Recon increases your view range, makes it uh, easier to spot enemy tanks rushing you. Same as Situational Awareness. Um, Call for Vengeance, not as useful. Signal Boosting, I don't think it's useful on this tier. Um, relaying, also not as useful on this tier, because everybody got a really good radio. Uh, Eagle Eye. I don't know if this is useful. I think it can be useful. It can be useful to see whether or not somebody already has some damage modules, tracks, engine, or maybe fuel tanks. Jack of all trades could be useful if a crew member gets knocked out, but not as useful. And mentor, yeah, could be, could be. I do think that when that one reaches 100%, I will go for situational awareness and then train up, uh, switch it out for Eagle Eye, most likely, and train up situational awareness again. Now, the reason I got a tree skill crew in this and not yet my tier 10 is because this is the crew that I first got on the M41 HMC, if I'm correct. And I don't have that tank anymore. I do have the M44. Or did this was my M44 skill, but I could be mistaken. Not completely sure. I might have bought this with another of the vehicles. Oh no, not barracks. Tech tree. That's the one I need. Um, let's see. This has a five-man crew, five-man crew, six... Yeah, this is my M12 crew, so I've played the M12, the M4043, and now the M53, M55 with it. Um, it's not going to go into my T92 HMC because they are too nice to have on the M53, M55. I will train up a new crew for the T92 when I have it. So, now you have my, well, my two cents about it, I guess. Um... You've got a little insight into how I think that it is best to play this line of artillery. Um, how best to set them up. How best to load out your crew and such. And yeah, as you can see, I'm nearly at my tier 10. I will post more videos about SPG gameplays when I have some really good replays for you guys. Um, please let me know. If you wouldn't want me to continue with this, please let me know if you want to see more SPG gameplay. And other than that, again, I'm nearly at my tier 10. Apart from my M44 and M53, I also have the SU-14. But I don't have a lot of games played in it. At the moment, it's almost completely... Well, it's completely stuck apart from the uh, radio, so... Yeah, I need, I really need to go and play with this one a little more. But apart from that, I really want to start a new SPG line. And I'm stuck between the French or the British. Now, if you have any suggestions for me, which 
I should play, which you would most want to see played, then I will start one of those two lines. I'm not going to start them both at the same time because I have a lot of, a lot of lines that I'm playing at the moment. The IS, the KV3, the KV2 still, the IS14 of the SU14, D50 and the T34. So, and then American, uh, Japanese heavies, the Swedes. Uh, I'm playing so many lines at the moment. Just let me know, British or French. And if you like this um, video, please click the like button, click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the little bell so you get a notification whenever I upload something. Also, leave a like, uh, leave a comment down below, um, and also. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook and you will get notifications. It's banter battles on everything. And once in a while I stream on Twitch. So if I do, you will get a notification on Twitter or Facebook or both if you have that. So you can actually see me playing live and I will play some SPG gameplay for you as well. And apart from that... I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Also check out my other videos. See you.